I'm willing to bet that there are a good number of you who would say that you don't know your purpose. Usually, though, that's not the case. Most people deep down, most people know what excites or satisfies them. They, they kind of know what they'd like to do. They're just afraid to admit it. Most often because the enemy has convinced them that what they do doesn't matter. That what they have doesn't matter. Or that it doesn't rise up to the level of making a big enough difference. So they're insecure about it and they never say it. And that's the second lie, that you don't have a purpose or a big enough purpose. In our celebrity-obsessed culture, media saturated. <laughs> we are inundated with stories of those who break records, invent technologies, find cures, feed small countries, top the charts. These are people that we think have achieved purpose because their names or contributions are well known or are in lights. And yes, they're inspirational, no doubt. But they are the exception, not the rule. In truth, most of us will never be number one in our category or influence multitudes. The reality is, if you are waiting for a world-changing thing to do, then you're likely going to be waiting forever. Now, years ago, I would have argued with that and taken it as a curse on my potential. Because when you grow up like I did, believing you are a reject, you look for things that make you stand out. You crave something to do that might make you someone important. When I confused my doing as the source of my being, I pursued only what was epic. Because doing and purpose became my identity. But that's backward. What you do does not determine who you are. What you do flows from who you are. Your identity comes first. Like Adam was made first before he was tasked to do anything. Identity must be known first because from that flows everything. That's just as God designed. You already have what you need for purpose. The first clue is what's in you. What are those talents and abilities that you've possessed for as long as you can remember? What are the natural skills that are relatively easy for you to pick up? I'm not saying ones that you've necessarily mastered or are perfect in, but what are those things that just kind of come easier to you? Are you good at music, drawing, acting? That's art-related stuff, maybe. You prefer hands-on things like building, crafting, or cooking. Those are not mine, <laughs> but maybe they're yours. Those are labor kind of skills. Or maybe you prefer to do things that involve your mind, like teaching or strategizing. Whatever it is, those natural abilities that you've had since birth are not coincidental. Take note of them. Every one of those represent an aspect of God's image that he divvied out and gave to you. For a reason. But the second ingredient that's in you is what drives you. You might call this passion. And to be clear, this isn't a skill or ability. A lot of people get that mixed up. A passion is not just something that you're good at or something that you do for a living. It's that unshakable thing that you live for. Well, our passions were placed by God in us too. The Bible describes that at your salvation, you receive spiritual gifts. I'd say these are passions. Some of them are for serving. Others are for teaching. Others are for giving. Maybe encouraging. I will say sarcasm is not one of them. That's for sure. Either is criticism or fault finding. So you can forget those, okay? Encouraging. That's one of them. But anyway, what brings you alive? 
That's passion. So the two ingredients of purpose, what's in you, your abilities, and what drives you, your passions, those are two things you already have, regardless of the size of them. When you bring those two ingredients together, that's where you start to discover purpose. But I got to stress, you discover it. You find it. So many people get paralyzed from doing anything in life because they're waiting for God to reveal what to do with what they have. Like I said a few minutes ago, they're waiting for something epic. But using what you have in a deeply meaningful purpose isn't something to wait for. Nor does it, as I've been saying, have to be something world-changing. It's something that enriches where you are. Something that makes some what of a difference in your world. It doesn't have to be the whole world, your world. It's something you discover, something you simply step into as you step. Years ago, I learned something that was hugely beneficial to me, especially at the beginning of my faith. You can't move a parked car. I mean, try it. Try steering a parked car. It doesn't go anywhere. You've got to be in motion for the direction to start happening. Well, a lot of us are parked. And we're saying, okay, God, I'm good at this. I love to do this. Bring me the opportunity and then I'll go. That's not usually how it works. How it usually works is you try things according to what you're good at and what you're passionate about. Again, you lean into your uniqueness, as I said in the first point. Sometimes as you try, you learn things that you don't like at all and that don't really work out well for you. And that's that. Other times you try something and it fits and then God leads you to the next step and the next and the next and that's kind of how he orders your steps. I remember when I was figuring things out, especially in ministry. I knew I was good at technology. I was an internet programmer for many years. I was passionate about the truth of God as well and I had no idea how to bridge the two. I thought they were polar opposite. But I tried things, small things. And some of those things told me what I was not good at and didn't like, such as street preaching or being a Sunday school teacher for elementary kids. Not good at either of those. But making videos, writing articles, using media as I dabbled into those things, I realize those enliven me. I like those. I'm gifted for those. I'm driven for those. And it got to a point to where without me even realizing it, you know what God did? As I took baby step after baby step after baby step, just leaning into what I had and what I love, he ordered my steps to combine the two into this ministry that fittingly started with a mobile app and internet outreach and today has some of its greatest impact upon people behind a screen. So I'll ask you, what's in your hands and what's in your heart? Do it. Maybe it's as simple as reading a book to your child, hosting a small group for your church, joining a fitness class at the gym. Take one baby step in the direction of what enlivens you then do your best to discern what's next. Sometimes you'll hear it clearly. Many times you won't. And that's okay. Don't let the devil convince you that it isn't big enough, epic enough, or that you are not enough. What you have and what you love were placed inside of you by God for a deeply meaningful purpose to enrich your world right where you are. So hear me. God's plan for your life isn't off in the distance. You haven't missed it. You haven't ruined it. You're living in it. It's what you do today that gets you to tomorrow. Yes, 
it's going to grow and it will evolve. But the pressure for that is far more on the Lord who orders your steps than it is on you. Hey, there's a secret strategy against your mind, and it's what's behind your battles with fear, insecurity, guilt, shame, even depression. After more than a decade in ministry and plenty of personal experience, I discovered that the devil deceptively uses truth to get you to swallow lies that are at the heart of your most toxic emotions and behaviors. He'll alert you to something that is true about you, maybe a weakness or something you fell to. Then he'll interpret what that means. Things like nobody will love you or even God is mad at you. Do you see it? By using something that really did happen, the devil then moves into the realm of hypothetical doom and gloom, often without you even realizing it. Cue the battles. That's why as I explore in my book, Shut Up Devil, the path to true freedom really is all in your mind. Seriously, as you get your beliefs aligned with God's truths, everything else starts to get in line. Get Shut Up Devil today at kylewinkler.org or wherever books are sold.